G-I-F, and man, I really mean it. Welcome to your Newsmax Daily for August 23rd, 2024, or 8 24 A day that may go down in history. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself, and I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself. President Biden and I are working to end this war such that Israel is secure, the hostages are released, the suffering in Gaza ends, and the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, security, freedom, and self-determination. That is what Vice President Kamala Harris finally said about the Israel-Hamas war and the Palestinian people during her acceptance speech on the final night of the DNC. On behalf of everyone whose story could only be written in the greatest nation on earth, I accept your nomination to be President of the United States of America. The rest of the speech was about promising to do things she had three and a half years to do and about Donald Trump. He and his allies would limit access to birth control, ban medication abortion, and enact a nationwide abortion ban with or without Congress. Simply not true. He intends to enact what in effect is a national sales tax, call it a Trump tax. Also not true. Simply put, they are out of their minds. Right after that, the former president called his favorite news network to talk about it. President Trump, great to have you here. I'm sitting with Mercedes Schlapp. We just watched the speech. What did you think? Great to have you on. Well, I think, and hello, Mercedes, and I hate to cut off Sebastian. That's really can be very <laughs> dangerous. I don't like doing that. But I will tell you, I just watched it. Very nonspecific. She didn't talk about many things like uh, interest rates, China, fracking and anywhere, let alone Pennsylvania, crime, poverty, uh, trade deficits, child trafficking, woman trafficking, drugs, the border. She didn't talk about the most important things. It was a very general speech. And I ask a simple question. Why didn't she do it? She's complaining about this and that. She's complaining about prices. Why didn't she do it? The only thing she wanted to do is put price controls on. And if you look back, it's been done like 122 times over the last 200 years. It's never worked once. In fact, it's driven tremendous inflation and destroyed most countries where they tried it. But she's not a student of history, that I can tell you. So, I mean, I I personally thought it was a terrible speech. It was very nonspecific. It was also very short. She just wanted to get off the stage because... Uh, her ideas are bad. Look, she's a Marxist. Yes. She is a total Marxist, and or, or beyond that. She skipped socialism. Remember I said, we will never have a socialist country. Our country will never be a socialist country. I was right. They skipped socialism. She went to Marxism and communism. Mr. President, let me ask you this. During her speech, she mentioned something about an ant that you would push forward an anti-abortion coordinator of sorts. This is the first I've ever heard of this and wanted to know that, you know, she's obviously trying to target these women voters. Uh, what's yeah. your answer to that? Uh, it's a total lie. I never even heard it. I never even heard the term. Well, they keep talking about Project 25, which is a group of uh, pretty far right people got together. They did something called Project 25. I have no idea what it is. I don't want to read it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know anything about it. But they use that. But they know that I have nothing to do with it. And that, look, everybody knows all of my policies. Yes. Uh, And you know in Roe v. Wade, we've taken that, uh, we've made that, we've done what they wanted us to do. We brought it down. First of all, it's exceptions. We have the exception for the life of the mother and rape and incest. And that's like Ronald Reagan, like myself, etc. Most people, most Republicans agree with that. You have to follow your heart, but most Republicans agree with that. But that issue has been brought way back. It's now in the states uh, taking votes, as you saw, Ohio, Kansas, and actually they were far more liberal than a lot of people would have thought. But everybody wanted that issue brought back to the states, legal scholars, Democrats, Republicans, everybody. 
And uh, we did that. And, you know, it's really become a, a almost, I think, uh, look, I'm not going to say it's an issue uh, that leans toward us, but people are happy. Every legal scholar wanted it brought back. They didn't want it in the federal government. And I was able to get it out, get it brought back to the states. And now the states are all voting on it. And it's where it should be. And I think you two agree with that. It's exactly where it should be. And this has gone on for 52 years. And now our country can be brought back and brought together. You know, it's wild. Five weeks ago, basically, the Democrats knew that she wasn't worthy of the presidency. Joe Biden doesn't like right. her. And here she is, the Democrat nominee. It's it's totally wild. Watching tonight, are you thinking about the debate? Did you see anything that you think you might be able to exploit? Does she look more beatable after tonight? Well, she lies, and she's not specific. And it was a very general, it was like just a general speech. But I ask one question. Why didn't she do it before? In fact, she's got five months left. Why doesn't she leave the beautiful studio or wherever she is right now, hop on a plane, go down to Washington, D.C., and close the border? Because yes. she can close the border very easily. You know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a bill. I didn't ask for a bill. I closed the border. I told, I told the Border Patrol, who are incredible people, and the law enforcement generally, including ICE, close up the border Get MS-13 out of our country. We took them out by the thousands. Get them out. We got criminals out. We have the best border we've ever had. You saw the famous border chart, my all-time favorite chart, for even different reasons, okay? You don't understand yeah. that. Yeah. But why didn't they close it? Why don't they go down to Washington and do these things? Why didn't she mention fracking? She didn't want to mention it. She will never allow fracking. She's just using that and saying it. You know, she's changed... She's the greatest flip-flopper. Every single thing that she believed in all her life, she's now changed because she wants to get elected. Donald Trump live on Newsmax last night after spending his day at the U.S.-Mexico border in Arizona with family members of victims killed by illegal aliens. This all while police were searching for a man who had threatened to kill the former president on social media. The Daily Mail, today there was a manhunt going on in this county. Somebody made death threats to you. Did you hear about that before coming? No. And what are your thoughts coming down here? Some people told me it's I've heard it's dangerous, but I also have a job to do. Uh, I've heard it's very dangerous. I haven't heard about that. They probably want to keep it from me. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> Let's get out of here right now. <laughs> no, thank you very much for saying it. But no, uh, and I have great respect for Secret Service. The job they do, including a month and a half ago, when they were jumping on top of me with bullets flying right at them. So... Uh, mistakes were made, and they're going to learn from the mistakes, but uh, I have great respect. But no, I haven't heard that, uh, but I'm not that surprised. And the reason is because I want to do things that are very bad for the bad guys. So I have heard it's very unsafe to make this trip. There were some people that really didn't want me to make it. Yeah, please. Yep. Please means next question. Moving on. Someone may be out there trying to kill me. Okay, next question. Police did take a 66-year-old man with several warrants against him into custody, who police say made several death threats against Donald Trump on social media. Let's go back to last night's Democratic National Convention for a moment. Right now, before the crisis, is when we get to choose. Why wouldn't we choose the leader who's tough, tested, and a total badass? Tough and tested. Donald Trump, right? I know who I want as our commander in chief. America, let's choose Kamala Harris. That's Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who actually said that with a straight face. I was drinking a glass of wine while I was watching the coverage on Newsmax and nearly spit it out. Tough, tested, and the person you want to call in a crisis. Kamala Harris. There was a lot of far-fetched, ridiculous comments made throughout the night, but none more ridiculous than that. She had one test, one test tested on the border, and she failed miserably. This is Trump legal spokesperson, attorney Alina Haba, on with Greg Kelly and Mercedes Schlapp. And obviously trying to make the case that Kamala Harris is a strong prosecutor. Your, your viewpoint on this? Look, um, 
This has been an utter disgrace as a woman, as somebody who is an American uh, child of immigrants. I can say that I have heard absolutely zero about policy. I've heard some sort of serious form of Trump derangement syndrome come out of every speaker out there, outside of the real American people. We're seeing actors and actresses from California, people that know nothing about politics. We just saw Eva Longoria, that's the best you got before Kamala Harris. And one thing I'm not hearing as a female is what are you going to do for my children? What are you going to do as an American for the gas prices, the grocery prices? And how are you going to protect my children from the borders that you have opened? This is not about a new person to the party. This is somebody we know well. And frankly, I have heard very little very little, close to nothing about policy and a whole lot of hatred for a place that's allegedly about joy. Attorney Alina Haba on Newsmax's special coverage of the DNC. And Pennsylvania Representative Dan Muser was live in studio with Emma Reckenberg on National Report. You know, this convention certainly is giving them somewhat of a boost, uh, but there's no reality behind it. You know, they call it joy. Most of my constituents and throughout Pennsylvania see it as torture. And and what 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 is really frustrating is it's just so phony. Uh, They're not at all talking about the things that matter to the Pennsylvanians, to to the, the American people. You know, they're talking about freedom. I mean, my goodness, we got Governor Shapiro, Josh Shapiro talking about freedom. I mean, between him and Waltz, they shut down more businesses during COVID and after COVID than probably any two governors there are. And that hotline uh, that you could call about your neighbors. The, how about in it? Minnesota. How, how about it? A, yeah. a, a, right. A uh, snitch hotline. Right. Yeah. And Josh Shapiro was attorney general while all this was happening. And also while Philadelphia was burning, mm-hmm. did nothing. Uh, and Waltz sat back while Minneapolis burned. So so it, 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 there's a lot of phoniness taking place, but they're not talking about the things that matter in Pennsylvania. We don't hear anything about the border. We don't hear anything about fentanyl. I don't think they mentioned fentanyl once. Meanwhile, it's killing over 100,000 people, over 5,000 in Pennsylvania. We're hearing nothing about inflation, grocery prices. Oh, wait, Kamala, excuse me, Kamala is going to put price controls on grocery prices. You know what that does? That puts fear through the, through the bones of, of my farmers. They get any increase in price, then I could be able to sell their potatoes if the grocery stores can't make money with it. They operate on such small margins uh, yeah. to begin with, right to, right, to make that the focus. It's been called out even by liberal media outlets. Um, right. You mentioned the Pennsylvania governor, Josh Shapiro, who, by the way, had been in the running for the VP spot, mm-hmm. and then he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but he did speak at the DNC yesterday. He had to talk about Donald Trump. Uh, here's that moment, in case you missed it. Donald Trump, a man with no guardrails, wants to take away our rights and our freedoms. And listen, while he cloaks himself in the blanket of freedom, what he's offering isn't freedom at all. You know, what you make of that moment, um, his speech, what he had to say? It's like opposite day. Okay, talk about gaslighting. I mean, all President Trump is about is freedom of marketplaces, freedom of religions, right? Freedom of school choice. It was funny how Governor Shapiro talked, mentioned public schools when he was talking about freedoms. Oh, you mean, Governor, we have the right to choose any school that we're told our kids have to go to based upon their zip code? That's some wonderful freedoms. How about backing school choice? So it's, it's, really, it's really literally opposite day. And, it, and it's gaslighting when they state such things. I mean, meanwhile, the agencies of the Biden Harris administration come down on on the private sector like 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 a ton of bricks. Uh, this whole this whole ideology is about control and it is about limiting freedoms uh, and it is about, you know, telling you what kind of stove and what kind of car you need to drive mm-hmm. and about banning uh, energy uh, yeah. produced in America, particularly fracking and, and natural gas. So uh, does the VP support <clears throat> fracking? Well, he, I, I think grudgingly. Uh, he, Vice he, President Kamala Harris. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, because, um, because oh, do we really oh, know? I mean, has has she, she answered abso- that recently? She absolutely is against it. She said it with enthusiasm several times mm-hmm. to to great applause. No, she does not want such fossil fuels. They will put them out of business. And if they won't through their words, because let's face it, this, these folks will say anything between Waltz and her uh, to get ele- and, and, and VP Harris to get elected. Um, but they, they will kill it through taxes and regulations. And the Pennsylvania people are are beginning to know that that's one of the main reasons we're going to win, because we are going to get the truth out. Eventually, she's going to have to do an interview without reading a teleprompter. Yeah. 
If it doesn't happen before then, at least there is that September debate. Yeah. And perhaps it will be Donald Trump who actually asks her to say, in the past, you've said you've been against fracking. Campaign statements have come out. Where do you stand on the matter? I would love for media <clears throat> outlets to address that, but I guess it won't happen. Newsmax's Emma Reckenberg with Pennsylvania Congressman Dan Muser. Hopefully, hopefully, Donald Trump will have the opportunity to hold Vice President Harris's feet to the fire during the debate, which will be on CBS. And hopefully the moderate Moderators will do the same and ask some of the really important questions. And just to put a bow on the whole convention thing, let's wrap it up with pollster John McLaughlin, who has some really important information for you to understand. People on our side, some of them are nervous. I understand, you know, the other party's convention. Reassure us or don't reassure us. Tell us what the numbers say. Well, I'll tell you, the one thing is they're trying to sandbag us again. Where you look at a poll like the Economist Yuga poll says we're down three. But they only have 28 percent Republicans, and that's eight points lower than they had in the 2020 uh, CNN exit polls. And they have 39 percent Democrats. That's two point higher. So that what they did was they 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 biased the poll by like 10 points to have Trump down three. So you've seen a lot of polls like that. That's just one example. But on the other hand, you know, the Media Research Center just did a study from July 21st to August 17th. 84% of the coverage for Harris has been positive from the mainstream media. 89% has been negative against Trump. And when you ask them, are they aware of Kamala Harris's positions? Right. 71% have no clue that she's for defunding the police. 81% no clue. She wants to give her private health care insurance. 75% no clue that she was the most liberal senator yep. in the U.S. Senate. Don't know these things. Long time, well-respected pollster John McLaughlin on Newsmax. And what you should do right now is just rewind a little bit and listen to that whole thing again. 81%, I think he said, of people don't know that she wanted to defund the police. 71% don't know that she was listed as the most liberal senator in the entire Senate. And what he said about the media. 84% of the coverage has been positive for Kamala Harris, 89% of the media coverage negative for Donald Trump. This is the biggest threat to the election for Donald Trump, uninformed people and slanted, biased media coverage. So the DNC and RNC now in the books. Today will be all about Kamala's speech and how ready she is for this, how great of a candidate she is, how Trump is going to end the world. Yesterday's Newsmax Daily was subtitled Exposing the Kamala Effect in San Francisco. Hopefully you listened to it. If not, go back and check it out. Rob Finnerty on the streets of San Francisco with San Francisco police officers. California Governor Gavin Newsom appeared on Newsmax to talk about it yesterday. Good evening, sir. Nice to see you. And it's good to be just to you, put brother. things in perspective, just to put things in perspective, California has the fifth largest economy in the world. It's giant. So you may have a lot of different problems, I suspect, than some of the other states. So tell me, what are your biggest challenges um, as, a, as the governor of California? Well, you're right, you're exactly right. Not only the fifth largest economy in the world, we're the size of 21 state populations combined. 27% of our state is foreign born. So I think foundationally, it's the ability to live and advance together across every conceivable and imaginable difference. That's our number one challenge. That said, it's also challenging in this respect. It's, it's America, but only more so. We have more hunting jobs, more manufacturing jobs, more ag and farming jobs than any other state in the nation. At the same time, we're the birthplace of life science, nanotech, biotechnology, and of course, AI, 35 of the top 50 AI companies in the world in California. So it's, it's, it's a dynamic state, it's a challenge state, but number one issue beyond any other is the issue of affordability, the issue of housing and its byproduct, which is its ultimate manifestation of our failure, and that's the issue of homelessness. How, do, how did you get to that point, though? I mean, it's a problem that's plagued every state in the nation, but certainly California, because it is such a large state, we, you know, we see the enormous impact on it. But how did, how did California get so much homelessness? I mean, because, but because of our own policies and neglect. We put up our, our feet. And we rested on our laurels. Uh, we allowed NIMBYism to dominate in our state. Uh, we're not building. It's, it's Econ 101, supply and demand. We simply have not been building enough housing for decades and decades and decades. So the cost 
of living, affordability, has been the dominant challenge in our state. Uh, that said, I will say, having traveled across the United States, the issue of housing and homelessness uh, is becoming more and more dominant. Red states, not just blue states. Uh, we're down, you saw the new numbers uh, last year in places like Florida that had a huge spike in homelessness. The housing costs, insurance costs across the board in states like Florida are increasingly challenging. So it's not surprising to me that in the economic plan that Kamala Harris put out, she talked about affordability and housing, not just from the prism of being a former Californian uh, as it relates to her time served in the state, but as vice president understanding the United States and its challenges. Well, she got roundly criticized by the Washington Post in her editorial for her economy or her, her speech on the economy. So she got criticized. And look, it's early on. I realize that we're sort of like in the celebratory stages of both parties. Now, of course, now the campaign. Now we're really going to find out what the candidates are going to do beginning, I hope, tomorrow. Newsmax's Greta Van Susteren with California Governor Gavin Newsom, who really, really wanted to be Biden's replacement. Right. And give him some credit for owning this a bit. He said, we simply haven't been building enough housing for decades, not to mention that the housing they did build was ridiculously expensive. The Supreme Court is also in the news today after Justice Amy Coney Barrett broke from other conservative justices on a key voting rights case out of Arizona. A lot of conservatives upset about this. The court issuing an order related to a case raised by the Republican National Committee asking the justices to block a lower court order that blocked enforcement of a law that would bar registered voters who have not previously provided proof of citizenship from voting in the presidential election and from mailing in votes in any federal election. Ultimately, in a five to four vote, the high court did grant part of the stay filed by the RNC while rejecting some other parts of the bill. So let me break it down. It will allow Arizona election officials to reject a new voter registration that does not include proof of citizenship, a birth certificate or a passport. But they rejected the part that would block Arizona residents already registered to vote, but that have not provided proof of citizenship from voting. So if you're already registered, no proof of citizenship, you're okay. If you don't have any proof of citizenship, a driver's license, a passport, and you're not yet registered to vote, you cannot get registered. But it's already so close to the election, and so many people without a birth certificate or a passport are already registered. And on Wall Street, today is the day Fed head Jerome Powell delivers remarks on the economy and the future of interest rates from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. This has been the big story all week. Ahead of that uh, announcement this afternoon, stocks opened in the green, and hopefully Jerome, the rally killer Powell, will say something good or say nothing at all. Keep up with all of the news on Newsmax, Newsmax.com, and make sure you have Newsmax Plus for the most complete coverage and lineup of your favorite shows and guests. Rob Schmidt tonight, Greg Kelly reports, The Record with Greta Van Susteren, Carl Higby, Chris Salcedo, Wake Up America, and more. Don't forget about the Wake Up America weekend edition. That's tomorrow and Sunday, beginning at 7. Saturday and Sunday agenda, Saturday report with Rita Cosby, the Gorka reality check on Sunday and and much, much more. I'm Tony Marino. This is the News Max Daily. Thank you, as always, for listening. Be sure to subscribe to whatever podcast platform you're listening on. Have a fantastic and safe weekend, and keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the News Max app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. Jerry Callahan from The Callahan Show. You can listen to us every day. We react to the latest news, politics, sports, and all the madness in the world. I'll give you my opinion with a little edge, a little attitude. I'm an unapologetic right-winger trapped behind enemy lines in deep blue Boston, so I'm used to taking on the mainstream media mob. You can hear us anywhere you get your podcast, or you can listen every day at Newsmax.com slash listen. It's our America. We conquered it. We built it. 
Great values like honesty and fairness. Great courage. A great nation needs a free press. Newsmax is it. 30 million Americans regularly go to Newsmax when they really need to know. They watch Newsmax TV at home on the free Newsmax app. They go to Newsmax.com. Start today. Newsmax is real news for real people.